I hate dating apps. That's what I would say if they weren't actually good at connecting you with new people. But that can't take away from how frustrating endlessly swiping through profiles with no real connection can actually be. To have better matches and actually meet people of value, you'll need to hear the three things that I'll share later in this video. So be sure to watch to the very end. First, let's see what Japan has to offer you as far as dating apps so that you can confidently choose which one would work best for you. Tinder is a dating app that's all about having fun. It's mostly for users that are in their early 20s, and it's more for a hookup culture than for serious dating. The demographic for Tinder here is mostly Japanese people, which is kind of surprising. It's kind of a mixture of a 60-40 Japanese to foreigner mix. One of the best things about Tinder is its circles, which help you find other singles who share the same interests as you. It's quick and easy to match with people, which makes it a great thing for people who want something casual. What doesn't work with Tinder is how inauthentic it can feel. Many people use heavy filters, don't even show themselves, and instead show photos of food or pets. And there's moments where real profiles start seeming like Tinder bots who are in there trying to convince you that there's actual real people on the app. Another popular dating app for socializing and meeting people is Bumble. Bumble is the most balanced app here, meaning it has a healthy mixture of people who want something casual and people who are wanting a relationship. This app is most popular if you're looking for a multilingual Japanese or foreign person. The target demographic for Bumble is a little older than Tinder, that's from your 25s to 40s, but there's no community aspect to Bumble, which means it's all based on your conversation and your initiative to meet these people outside of the apps. But Bumble does give you a lot of prompts and guidance on creating your profile, which can usually spark some good conversation if you use it. In my opinion, Bumble is the most straightforward and authentic app here, making it something that is safe for its users. There's a competitor to Tinder in Japan, and it's the Japanese equivalent of Tinder, where your profile can receive a lot of likes that can help promote you in getting more successful matches. Pairs also has a lot of communities that are similar to Tinder that can help you find new places and new opportunities to meet people. It's targeted to people who are in their early 20s and 30s and people who are looking for something casual to people who are wanting a relationship. It is free for both men and women to use, but there is a subscription fee for men who are wanting to message women. This kind of makes a barrier to where a lot of women will match with guys and message them, but they get no response because the guys are not paying for the app themselves. But still, I think it's one of the best apps to use if you're looking to meet somebody who is fluent in Japanese. If you're looking for a more serious Japanese dating app, there's an app where you can go straight from matching directly into your first date. Dine is a Japanese matching app that might be right for you if you want to have some help in organizing your first date. You match with people based off of restaurants or places that they would like to meet up for their first date. Whenever you two agree on a place and a time, that's whenever the match happens. Something that doesn't work with other dating apps is how there's endless conversation and no plans to meet up. With Dine, it's all about making that first initial plan to meet up and conversation begins there. The app's demographic is largely Japanese, which means you will need to be fluent and looking for a Japanese person. An app that connects you to friends or friends of friends or friends of friends of friends is an app called Hop. Hop is all about making matches and connections based off of your contact list, which means you need to use Line, which is a popular Japanese messaging app, and have a lot of context on that. The great thing about this is it makes it kind of safe to meet people who are already in your circle, but the downside is if those people aren't using the same app, it's going to be really hard to find them. Hop's demographic is largely Japanese, but there are some foreigners on it as well. It's free for women, but men do have to pay a subscription in order to use the app. Finding the right dating app for you might not be the difficult part, but it is frustrating finding actual matches that lead on to dates. That's why I want to give you these three things that can help you have better success on dating apps. Number one, use all five photos. It gives you a lot of real estate for you to really advertise yourself off to another person. You're only holding yourself back whenever you're not presenting more photos for somebody to make a better decision about whether they wanna swipe left or swipe right on you. Number two, skip the small talk. The conversation in the app should be focused more on filling out if there's a spark there, if you can feel a positive vibe, and if that's something that you wanna see more of in an actual date, and then get into a conversation that is planning that day. Number three, keep two to four conversations going. Don't get overwhelmed by too many conversations or too many matches. Focus down on only two or four. If one of those is going good, you can move it on to a date. And if they're not going anywhere, find a point where you can drop them, make some new matches, bring in some new people, and start new conversations. Using the right dating app isn't everything. You also need to know what trends are happening right now, what kind of people you're going to encounter. So you should watch this video over here.